Hi, welcome to part one of chapter 19a, the cardiovascular system, the blood vessels. Here we see blood flowing through a blood vessel. Why are we learning about blood vessels? Well, understanding how the body controls blood pressure in our blood vessels helps us to be able to measure blood pressure accurately. Additionally, as seen on the right, understanding blood vessels and how they work will allow us to explain the symptoms of diseases caused by blockages in blood vessels. From our syllabus, objectives you should focus on are the following. Compare the structure and function of arteries, arterioles, capillaries, venules, and veins. Define collateral circulation and an anastomosis, and also give examples. Describe the pulmonary circulation and, and identify its principal arteries and veins. Describe the systemic circulation and identify its principal arteries and veins. Trace the flow of blood through selected vessels of the body. Identify the hepatic portal system and explain its significance. Define cardiac output and relate the importance of cardiac output, blood volume, and peripheral resistance to blood pressure. Discuss determinants of peripheral resistance, blood viscosity, vessel length, and vessel diameter. Describe blood pressure and differentiate between systolic and diastolic arterial pressures. And discuss the factors that affect venous return to the heart. We will first begin with blood vessel structure and function. Blood vessels are the delivery system that begins and ends at the heart. They work in conjunction with the lymphatic system to circulate fluids. Arteries carry blood away from the heart. The blood in arteries is oxygenated except for in the pulmonary circulation and fetal umbilical vessels. Veins carry blood towards the heart. The vessels carried, I'm sorry, the blood carried by the veins is deoxygenated except for in the pulmonary circulation and in the fetal umbilical vessels. Capillaries typically connect arteries and veins and are in direct contact with tissues. The blood in capillaries serves those cells' needs. So remember, artery starts with A. They carry blood away from the heart. Figure 19.1 illustrates the relationship of the different vessels to each other. Up here is the heart. Going away from the heart, remember A is for artery and away, is the arterial system, so over here to the right. Generally, the vessel diameter decreases the further away from the heart it is until we reach the capillaries, way down here at the bottom. And then the vessel diameter increases on the way back to the heart. Immediately after the heart, the arteries are elastic or conducting arteries. After the elastic arteries come the muscular arteries or distributing arteries. Sometimes there is an arterial venous anastomosis, so a direct connection from the artery to the vein with no capillary involvement. Most of the time, the muscular arteries proceed to arterioles, which are very small diameter vessels. They then, they then lead to terminal arterioles, which we see here, and then a meta-arterial. At the end of the meta-arterial is a precapillary sphincter. These control the blood flow from the arterial system into the capillaries. Capillaries, shown here in purple, are the exchange vessels. This is where oxygen leaves the blood for the tissues and where carbon dioxide enters the blood from the tissues. Following the capillaries are the post-capillary venules. So we start here and we have a post-capillary venule. This then leads into small veins. Small veins come together to form large veins, which brings the blood back to the heart. We also see here in the green, it's the lymphatic system. So all this green stuff. The lymphatic system recovers the leaks from the circulation, and we'll cover more about that later and also in chapter 20. 
All blood vessels have a lumen, which is the hole down the middle of the vessel. The walls of the vessels, except for capillaries, are made up of three layers or tunics. The tunica intima, the tunica media, and the tunica externa. externa. Capillaries are made of endothelium with very little basal lamina. Beginning with the innermost layer, we have the tunica intima. It is in direct contact with the blood that flows through the lumen of the vessel. Simple squamous epithelium lines the lumen of all vessels, creating the endothelium. It is continuous with the endocardium of the heart and is very slick, so it reduces friction of the blood flowing over it. The subendothelial layer is a connective tissue basement membrane only found in vessels larger than one millimeter. The layer of the blood vessel that is deeper than the tunica intima is the tunica media. So think about the middle being for media. It is composed mostly of circularly arranged smooth muscle and sheets of elastin. Sympathetic vasomotor nerves innervate this layer causing vasoconstriction or a decrease in the lumen diameter and also vasodilation, which is an increase in the lumen diameter. The tunica media is the bulkiest layer and is responsible for, for, for maintaining blood flow and pressure. The outermost layer of a blood vessel wall is the tunica externa or tunica adventitia. It's composed mostly of loose collagen fibers that protect and reinforce the wall, anchoring it to surrounding structures. The externa is infiltrated with nerves, lymphatic vessels, and lymphatic vessels. Large veins are also contain elastic fibers in this layer. The vasa vasorum is a system of tiny blood vessels found in larger vessels that nourish this external layer. So notice va vasa or vasa vasorum. Here we see generalized um, arteries and veins. Both of them have three tunics. The tunica enema is the innermost layer. So we see the lumen being here, the center, the hole. Then we have the tunica intima. Okay. The tunica intima is made up of the endothelium and the subendothelial layer. And we also have the internal elastic membrane. Okay, so those three parts on the artery. And then on the vein, we just have the endothelium and the subendothelial layer. Notice <clears throat> um, on the left, the tunica media is thicker than its externa. So the tunica media is the middle layer, and it's about that thick. Um, and it has the, oops, sorry, and it has the yellow layer as well. The tunica externa is very thin. However, in the vein, we have a thinner tunica media and a larger externa. This slide is of table 19.1 and details the differences of the tunics of the different blood vessels. Please make sure that you review this and study it in your text. It goes to the different arteries, arterioles, capillaries, venules, and vein. Okay. Arteries are divided into two groups based on size and function. There are elastic arteries and muscular ar arteries. And there also are arterioles. So really, it's three groups here. Elastic arteries, they are the thick walled and they ha have large low resistance lumens. Elastic arteries include the aorta and its major branches. They are also known as conducting arteries because they conduct blood away from the heart to medium sized vessels. Elastin is found in all three tunics in elastic arteries but mostly in the tunica media. It contains substantial smooth muscle, but it's non-active in vasoconstriction. 
elastic arteries stretch and recoil to accommodate the pressure differentials coming from the aorta and to create a continuous blood flow downstream, even between heartbeats. Muscular arteries arrive after the elastic ones. They are also known as distributing arteries because they deliver the blood to the organs. Their diameters range from a pinky finger size to pencil lead size. Most of the named arteries are muscular arteries. They have the thickest tunica media with more smooth muscle and less elastic muscle, elastic tissue. The tunica media is sandwiched between elastic membranes. Muscular arteries are active in vasoconstriction. Arterioles are the smallest of all arteries. Large arterioles have three tunics, but smaller ones are mostly a single layer of smooth muscle surrounding endothelial cells. They control the flow into capillary beds via vasodilation and vasoconstriction of smooth muscle. Arterioles are also called resistance arteries because their changing diameters change the resistance to blood flow. Arterioles lead to capillary beds.